Well, I had a little extra of the cove molding, so I decided to trim out the bottom of the cabinet, and it adds a little strength to the bottom of the cabinet. It also looks nice. Now, as for the top, I've decided to use three quarter inch birch plywood, and I'm going to band the edge with a piece of molding that I'll make with the table saw and the router. But before I can even start on the top, I still have a little work left to do on the back of the cabinet. I've milled a piece of poplar on the table saw to half of an inch by an inch and a half. And I'm going to use that to clean up the back of the cabinet. And basically I'll run a piece of molding on the bottom, on the top, and then I'll picture frame this panel with a piece of 3 8 shoe molding. I just wanted to point out that the blanket chest lid is going to be held on with two hinges. So when I'm nailing this molding onto the back of the cabinet, I'm just making sure that I keep any nails away from the general area of where the hinges will go. And that way I don't need to worry about hitting a nail with the screw and then maybe cocking the hinge off to one side or another. finished with the box but I still need to make one more piece of molding and that's a piece of molding that will cover the end grain of the plywood and be flush with the top of the box. I'll make it out of poplar and it will measure a half of an inch by an inch and a quarter. And just in case you were wondering why some of the material that I have been using on the box is white, it's just leftover material from a trim job. It's the same species and I'm painting the box so it's, I'm just using it up. Since I'm attaching the hinge to this side of the box, I'm also going to use a few inch and a quarter screws for reinforcement. Now I'm ready to move on to the top of the blanket chest or the lid, and I've already cut my plywood to size. Now I need to make the trim to band the edge. The first step is to rip a piece of molding at an inch and a quarter, and I've got an eight foot piece of poplar here, and that should be just enough for the lid. I've got a double fluted roundover bit in the router, and it's a roundover with an edge on the top and the bottom. And I've clamped a half inch piece of plywood to the work table and that will keep the piece of molding from pushing away as I put pressure on the wood with the router. I wanted to add a little strength to the molding, so I added the biscuits along with inch and three quarter nails.
With the top finished, the next step is to attach it to the cabinet with hinges. So I'll need to mortise out a space for the hinges first. I'll measure in six inches from each side of the cabinet and then transfer that mark to the lid. First making sure I have the same reveal on each side. To cut the mortise out, I'll use a straight bit and I've customized the base of one of my routers and attached a straight edge. And I'll use a sharp chisel to straighten out the corners. Now I'm using a VIX bit, and that helps to make sure that you drill your hole right in the center. I like to attach the hinge with one screw, and then come back and pre-drill for the next two screws. Well, that's about it and I will need to take the top off now and get the whole box ready for paint. I'm painting the outside I'm going to clear coat the inside. Uh, as soon as I have a video on how I painted the box I'll put it up and I'm going to make a playlist for this and I just started to do that I think they're really useful so uh, you'll be able to go right from the beginning to the end if you like. Uh, thanks for tuning in I'll see you next time.